Ukrainian officials are warning Russia is gearing up for what they're describing as mass maximum escalation just ahead of a possible spring military offensive against Ukraine. CNN senior international correspondent Fred Plankin has our report from the front lines. All-out winter warfare on the Eastern Front. We're in a trench with Ukrainian paratroopers. They fire on Russian positions using AKs and a U.S.-supplied Browning heavy machine gun. They're searching for weak spots in our position, says the commander, call sign Ghost. They want to see if we fight back. If we show strong resistance, though, they don't advance. And this is what strong resistance looks like. The Russians are only about 400 yards away, hidden in the snow and fog, but constantly firing at the entrenched Ukrainians. The enemy uses all kinds of weapons, Bogdan says, small arms, heavy machine guns, artillery, mortars, rocket launchers, and aviation as well. But so far, the Ukrainians say they haven't lost an inch of territory here. The Ukrainians say the situation here is reminiscent of some of the worst times in World War II, where they're not only fighting a strong adversary, but the elements as well. The snow, the mud, and the cold make fighting here even tougher. And Ukraine's leadership believes the Russians will soon escalate even more after mobilizing hundreds of thousands of men for a likely spring offensive. But this gunner, who goes by the name Deputy, says the paratroopers are ready. It will be hard, he says, it will be tough, but we will hold because we stand here for our land. If we don't do it, nobody will. There's a visceral hatred towards Moscow's leaders among these men. In Russia, they have a terrorist dictatorial regime, Bogdan says. So now the civilized world is fighting against this wild, medieval dictatorship. As we prepare to leave, incoming grenades explode above. Yeah, let's go. And this, the men say, is a relatively quiet day. They expect much worse in the months to come, but their motto is, if not us, who else? And Wolf, when the Ukrainians talk about that, they also say that they believe that especially the months of February and March are going to be extremely tough for them. And, you know, some of those things we are already seeing as we travel along the eastern front line here in Ukraine. There are several places that we've been to where the Ukrainians are saying they're already seeing the Russians beef up their forces there, especially with those people that they mobilized towards the end of last year. So they do expect that there is going to be a large scale offensive coming from the Russians. But as you heard there from those paratroopers that we were with today, they believe they can stand their ground. However, they also say that they are going to need Western weapons, Western uh, weapons from the U.S. and its allies to make that happen, Wolf. All right, Fred, thank you very much. Fred Plankin in the war zone for us. Stay safe over there, Fred. Thank you. We appreciate it very, very much. I want to dig deeper right now. Joining us, retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Cedric Layton. He's a CNN military analyst. And we're also joined by Evelyn Farkas, the former U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense. Colonel Layton, uh, Ukraine warns that Russia is now gearing up for what they're calling maximum escalation. What are you watching for as Russia clearly ramps up its military offensive? Well, Wolf, the main things that I'm watching for are how the Russians are disposing of their forces, where they're putting them, how they're moving them. Uh, are there new troop concentrations in specific areas? Uh, so for the most part, what we're seeing and what the Ukrainians are seeing is that they're moving into the eastern areas, the areas where Fred was just at. Uh, these are really indications that the Russians are moving uh, their forces forward, mainly the conscripts, but they're also moving some of their more experienced units, like the airborne units, into Bakhmut. And that indicates that they really believe that that particular city, that particular town, is one that they need to capture at this point. You know, Evelyn, uh, what more does Ukraine need right now to prepare for this major Russian escalation that's coming? Uh, as it waits, uh, it's clearly waiting still for these Western battle tanks to be deployed. Well, you heard, Wolf, you heard Fred talk about the fact that the Russians have air power or they have air, um, you know, essentially power that they can employ.
deploy through the air. And I think this is what's missing for the Ukrainians. You know, going back several months, the Ukrainians were trying to get the MiG, the, the Soviet-era fighter aircraft, from the Poles and other NATO allies, and that didn't work. I, I am hopeful that now, um, given this new offensive, that we will turn around and, you know, the U.S. can say we'll provide F-16s if that's the green light that's required, the cover that's required. But I think we need to provide the Ukrainians with aircraft so that they can provide cover for their troops on the ground. Well, let me follow up with Colonel Layton. Uh, you clearly served in the U.S. Air Force. Why is Ukraine publicly lobbying now? They're pleading for these F-16 fighter jets from the U.S. and from other NATO uh, allies, despite U.S. opposition that the jets, uh, uh, the, the U.S. arguing the jets would be, quote, impractical. Yeah, so the Ukrainians believe that uh, they can use these jets with a minimum amount of training wolf. I think the fact of the matter is that when you look at how pilots are trained, uh, it can take up to a year to train pilots in certain airframes. Now, in the case of the Ukrainians, I think we're looking at somewhere between three to eight months of training. So that, uh, you know, requires something. There's also a logistical tail that has to be considered. Plus, uh, the right tactics have to be developed and, and used uh, by the newly minted F-16 pilots if the Ukrainians get that far. So the U.S. is reluctant to do this because of a lot of these considerations. But if the Ukrainians can prove to the U.S. that they can use these aircraft and use them effectively, uh, then uh, perhaps the green light will happen in spite of objections that we hear right now. Evelyn, I just want to get your reaction. The Israeli uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told CNN exclusively last night in an interview with our Jake Tapper that he would be willing to mediate between Russia and Ukraine. Listen to this. Listen to this exchange. If I'm asked by both sides, and frankly, if I'm asked by the United States, because I think, you know, you can't have too many uh, cooks in the kitchen. If asked by all relevant parties, I'll certainly consider it, uh, but I'm, I'm not pushing myself in. I think this is of monumental importance because I think the peace of the world is at stake. So what's your reaction, to Evelyn? How realistic is that possibility? Well, if I think everyone wants to be a mediator, but the situation isn't ripe for mediation. I mean, Vladimir Putin is hardly ready to back down. As you hear the Ukrainians saying, and the, in fact, the Russians themselves, they're ready to launch another assault. They are not giving up. And obviously, same for the Ukrainians, they're not giving up any square footage, any square meterage of their land. So it, it's, that's not a situation that's ripe for negotiation. One side needs to be winning or both sides need to feel like they're losing. And so um, I think what uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is offering is, is fine, but frankly, what I think Israel needs to offer right now is weaponry to the Ukrainians so that they can defeat the Russians and defeat this violent, aggressive, you know, international rights uh, violating foreign policy of the Russian government. Yeah. All right. Evelyn Farkas, thank you very, very much. Colonel Layton, thanks to you as well.